So Jennifer, you know, always great to talk to you. And, and, you know, you always give us such great and compelling documentaries, my God, and this one, wow. Uh, but before I go there, first of all, congratulations, because you are opening Hot Docs. It's been what, 13 years since you've had this honor. How does this feel? Well, you know what? It feels pretty great. Like I, I, I'm, I'm so excited about it. And I, I've been telling people that we are, we grew up with hot dogs. We basically kind of started at the same time. And so when Act of God opened, and I, I do think that was a bit of a strange film um, for the opening night of the festival, but I'm really glad they chose it. Um, but I, I, just to come around full circle, like this is my 10th feature. Yes. And I kind of feel like, wow, that that's a bit of a milestone. So we're, we're really, really honored. And we hope that it, um, you know, that it resonates with people and that it, 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 it's thought provoking and creates conversations and everything, what documentary is supposed to do. So exactly. So I always wonder this when I talk to a documentarian, especially somebody who's so seasoned as you are, how do you choose a topic? You know, there's so many millions of things out there. How did something like this come your way? Well, you know, I've, you know, I've been an environmentalist ardently for many years, yes. as is my husband, Nick, and um, the work we've done with Ed has its own life. And I, I've always been interested in the sort of in the way that transnational corporations get away with what they do right yeah. um and and you know and especially because there are corporations like this that are are they're very aggressive with crit um you know and and so i i think in some ways that kind of silences criticism you know um I also feel that the the limitations to justice when there is injury um are fascinating and kind of terrible, you know. I agree. The, the, yeah. We, yeah, we mass torts are money damages. That's what happens, right? And so if it's not a lot yeah. of money, the corporation doesn't care. And even if it is a lot of money, they often just find a way to move on. And I, I you know, I, I don't know why heads of corporations don't go to jail when people are injured. I don't know why, you know, at an ordinary, ordinary people go to jail if they hurt somebody. So, right, right. Um, so, so, so I was fascinated by that, but I also, it was through friends or people that we met at Sundance with Anthropocene at, when we were there in 2019, mm -hmm. who were talking about this case. And I was like, wow, that's interesting. Somebody must be following it like compiling it and nobody was and so we talked to the original group of lawyers and said this is who we are um you know and in a way being from Canada was good because we're under the radar we've been doing this for four years now um wow. you know essentially um completely without anybody knowing right which yeah. is good yeah yeah but also it was it felt important to me to create a historical record of what I think is a watershed moment in citizens' rights against oh. corporations and also um, the sort of David versus Goliath story that where David actually um, won. <laughs> yes. So that, there, that too, to yeah. a certain extent. To a right. certain extent. Exactly. So yeah, just going back to from what you said here, you know, yeah, he won and, and uh, but you look at this this poor guy, you know, Lee Johnson, the, the main subject. And then of course there's so many other people that this has impacted, but I could barely watch like, you know, when he was picking his skin and what he was going through and he started off, you know, hardworking guy, just wanted to make a living for his family, you know, yada, yada, he gets cancer and the guy's dying and all the money in the world, you can win all the money in the world. Who cares? Like, honestly, so what? You know, yeah, he can give it to his family down the road. And it just, it's heartbreaking. But the, I could not watch the scenes when he was like peel it, literally peeling his skin off when he got doused and yeah. game over. I mean, how, what was it? What was it like sitting down and talking to him? I know he's coming to the um, premiere, which is amazing. Um, we're so we're so. Wow. That For him to, you know, yeah. Tell no, me a little I mean, bit about that. 
basically we didn't know that Lee was going to survive um, yeah. until the, the the film was over and I was always dreading waiting wondering and we've been in touch through this whole time and he is such a a, a wonderful charismatic everyman you know he's just he's just a as you say an ordinary guy and this is what can happen to an ordinary person. And that, yeah. that, that, that is the massive injustice of all of this. Um, he's well enough to travel, like he gets tired and of we course. be careful about, you know, parsing things out, not tiring him out, not doing too much of that. And then, you know, re, re sort of piecing together the trial in a way that was comprehensible and also um, under, like comprehensible, but, where it moved, you know, you can see these things go on forever. They go on for right. months and months and there, there's a lot of that. So going through all of that material and then trying to make the, the science credible, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then the bigger picture stuff and the other people who we interviewed, all of which happened during COVID. Like we, 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 we filmed in 2019 until we got shut down in early 2020. And then it was like, well, what are we gonna do? And we just started editing and we did some remote shoots and it, it took longer because mm -hmm. of that, I would say. But um, uh, it, it, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like this is a record. This, that we've made a record of something that happened and, yeah. and that it's an important record to have. Oh, no question about it. And it really opened my eyes up. I mean, even though we kind of know this in the back of our heads, like, I mean, Roundup, for example, is a weed killer that everybody used, like everybody, you know, like, you don't yeah. think you just go to the hardware store and you pick up the crap that you need and you go, you do it. Obviously, I had heard about this and stopped using this junk ages ago. However, it opened my eyes in your documentary, like, you really point out like how this affects not just our health, like every single thing we do, like every single thing we do, what we eat, like what we, it was astounding to me when you had those graphics come up and it just does it, wow. Like what surprised you maybe when you started to work on this and it started to dig deep into this? Well, I will say that this is this is a, a lot more perhaps didactic than some of our other films, especially films like Anthropocene that are yeah. a lot more meditative and, and, and experiential, but it was really important to convey the information. Like I did not know um, that forest plantations are sprayed aerially to get rid of broadleaf species so that the little, you know, pine trees, the spruce and pine can grow. Yeah. And then you just imagine, like, what are the systemic effects of that? The thing that was the most um, sort of fascinating as we started to, and terrifying, as we started to look into insect decline and we contacted Krefeld Entomological Society and have found that over three decades, there's been 75% decline. And this is, a, this is an organization that has been doing continuous ecosystem research for decades and decades, like a hundred years. So, mm. so their, their research is really valued for that reason. This idea, there's this thing called the shikimate pathway, which is this pathway of enzymes that um, it, is is what the what glyphosate does in plants it cuts it off so that those nutrients don't get to the plant and that's why they die but yeah. that of course has, it happens in everything that comes into contact with it so that sort of learning a the ubiquity of use that was something that i had no idea you know rail lines sides of highways hydro lines parks right things, Diamonds, golf courses, cemeteries, school everything. grounds, yeah. everywhere. Not just people's gardens, not just farmers' fields, those two. Right. For, for like, so you sort of learn all of that and go, wow. I mean, this, this, there's a lot of this used. And now we're seeing the effects, the systemic effects, mm -hmm. not just to people who are being really injured, but to entire ecosystems and other species. And that to me was was pretty mind blowing. Yeah, absolutely, it was for me too to watch this and oh my gosh, I just honestly can't believe it. So obviously the Monsanto papers like were such a huge breakthrough 
for the public. You know, at the end of the day, as you say, what's wonderful about your documentary is that, yes, it's documented. You know, it's there now for everybody to see. What would, what would you like people to kind of take away from this? And, and you know, I, if they're suffering from something, maybe some big company, like, encourage people to take on the big companies. You know, you don't always win, right? It's hard, obviously don't have money or, you know, there's just all these obstacles. Well, and that's one of the, you know, I have to say every time I make a film, it's like doing a mini degree in a subject. <laughs> and I, I, I love that. Like, yeah. I, so I learned so much about mass tort agency capture, the limitations of mass torts, the, the rights of transnational companies and, and corporations and, um, you know, the impunity in, in some ways uh, uh, with which they operate and are allowed to operate. So I, I, I think what impressed me most about the bravery of, of Lee and these other people who came forward was they weren't doing it, for, as you said, all the money in the world is not, who cares if you're yeah. going to die, right? But, but actually to do that, to shine a light for others so it's an example of yes you can take on these 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 multinationals um but also is there a way that we should be changing our system of justice because mm. these are money damages only and they don't really hit where it hurts for these corporations and you think i mean sort of these mass tort lawyers people you know caricature them as being ambulance chasers and yet if they didn't take this on, nobody would ever be able to afford to take on a corporation like that. So, yeah. so this is, they, they are a necessary part of this, you know, quest for justice. Is it the best way to achieve justice? No. I mean, I feel like the, the, the model is do whatever you want until you get caught or until somebody notices that you're doing something wrong. And then they have to sue you and prove that you're doing something wrong right. in order for you to stop. And that's yeah. like, well, wait a second, like, what about proactive, you know, care? What about proactive uh, caution in, 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 in this regard? So yeah. I feel like I want people to both be aware of the um, extent to which it's, a, it's an anthropogenic thing. We are altering um, our environments, our ecosystems, everywhere we live. We all have glyphosate in us, right? Yeah. It's like the forever chemical. It's like Teflon. We all have it. For um, sure. We, we have all been exposed to it. What does that mean? And why, why, why is that okay? You know, um, so that, and then the fact that, yes, there are people who are brave enough to fight and, and hopefully their fights and already there have been, um, repercussions. Glyphosate, uh, Roundup is going to be taken off the residential market eventually. There are I thought it already places. had. It's still out there in stores? Yeah, it is. Wow. They're, they're phasing it out. But, yeah. you know, in a lot of places, uh, you know, places just stop selling it, right? There yeah. are a lot of countries that have banned its use in, in, in large public areas. That's good. And all of that has happened as a result of these trials. So there, there are positive things that have come out of it. It's just, um, it's monumental, you know, yeah. Um, and. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's amazing. It is amazing. Well, you've done another amazing job. Thank you so much for this, because boy, did I ever learn a lot, even though I thought I knew, I learned a lot. I, I had heard about this whole thing and I'm I just. Glad. Yeah, and just quickly, anything. So what's next for you? Are you already thinking up your next one or started on your next one? <laughs> don't, don't you think I should retire? Like I'm sort of. No, I'm, I'm you can never a, retire, I'm Jennifer. Having, no, 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 no. We would not. I'm that. having a three quarter life crisis a bit because I'm sort of thinking about. You know, there's so many great filmmakers and I like and films that I see and people who we're working with now, younger filmmakers, Lisa yeah. Jackson, Chelsea McMullen, unbelievable. I just saw Fire of Love. It's a beautiful film. And I think, you know. Yeah, I'm like, good friends with Ina, Ina Fitchman. Yeah. When, oh my God. I went to camp it's with so her cool. back in the day. I've known Did her for so many years. Oh my gosh. We went to camp oh, Ramah together. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, what a film, right? Like, and, and I kind of think, Geez, so, uh, but I don't know. I feel like I have to um, 
pull back a little bit. Nick was a little bit, when, when we jumped into this right on the heels of Anthropocene, he yeah. looked at me a bit like, are you crazy? <laughs> and, and, uh, and I went, maybe, but <laughs> you have to do this. And right. so now I'm going to try not to do that again. I'm going to try to just take a little break, take a little break and, and live with this one and see how it lands. Well, it'll land, it'll land, that's for sure. But congratulations on everything and then I would have a wonderful opening night. I know it's gonna be, it's so exciting that so many people are coming from the film. And uh, like I said, especially Lee, uh, there's gonna be a lot of tears, I'm sure. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you so much. We're thank really you, Jennifer. Excited. And thank you for bearing with me with the with the internet at the beginning. Oh, it all here. worked in the end. Yeah, all good. Thank okay. you so much. Best of luck Take to you, care. I'm sorry to see you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.